So today we're going to be working on the chapter three reviews. Um, so we're going to start with the basic arithmetic and integers review. And just like a quick note, um, I tell you guys all to try this first without a calculator if you're working on this in the book. Um, and the reason I say that is because this is meant to practice like your arithmetic skills, because remember, one of the sections is without a calculator and one um, and one of the sections does allow you to have a calculator. So first try it without a calculator, then try it with a calculator to make sure you can do both, that you can um, do it correctly like by yourself, and then also that you're using a calculator correctly. Um, so let's get started. First, I just wanted to remind you guys about um, a couple of rules regarding integers. So when you're adding or subtracting integers, basically the rule is if you have the same signs, add and keep the sign. So what that means is if you have like negative seven minus five, those are both, if you look to the left, they both have a negative associated with them. So they're the same sign, negative signs. So basically you add the number part, like seven and five to get 12 and you keep the same sign that they have, the negative sign. Now, if you're adding and subtracting with different signs, meaning like you have negative seven plus five, because if you look to the left of each of them, one's a negative, one has a positive, one's positive, one's negative, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract and keep the larger sign. And I put larger sign in quotation marks because when I'm saying the larger one sign, I'm saying the um, if you just look at the number part, which one's larger. Like if we just look at the number part, seven is larger. But of course, negative seven is not larger. It's just the number part we're looking at. Seven is greater than five. So you look at the number part for which one's larger and you subtract the number parts. Seven minus five is two and you keep the larger one sign, negative, so it becomes negative two. For multiplying and dividing, the rule is if they're the same signs, you get a positive answer. So if you're doing um, negative seven times negative five, it would be 35. Um, if you were doing like negative 50 um, divided by negative 10, that would be just five, positive five. Um, so this is for multiplication and division. If you have different signs, you're going to get a negative answer. So like with this one, negative 50 divided by 10, that's going to give you a negative 5 because they have different signs associated with them. This is a negative 50. This is a positive 10. So you need to have the negative answer. So now I'm going to do the examples for this chapter. Um, so we're going to start with um, 65 times 5. So whenever you're multiplying, what you want to do is you want to line up your multiplication if you can't do this in your head, which most people can't. And you're going to want to start with the bottom and multiply by the top from right to left. So 5 times 5 is going to be 25. You keep the 5, you carry the 2. Then you're doing 5 times 6, which is 30, and then you add what you carried over. So 30 plus the 2 you carried over would be 32. So the answer to this one would be 325. Now here we're adding and subtracting and we have different signs. So when we have different signs, remember the rule is we subtract the numbers. So we're gonna do 98 minus 48 and we keep the bigger sign. So this would be eight minus eight is zero, nine minus four is five, so it would be 50. And the bigger one um, of the two numbers, 48 and 98, it would be 98, which is positive. So we're gonna keep the positive sign in our answer. Now if we go to number three, again, we have different signs, so we're gonna do the same thing, subtract and keep the bigger one sign. So this is going to be 52, and the bigger value, if we're looking at just the numbers 67 and 15, would be 67, which happens to be negative, so that means we have to have a negative 52 as our answer. Now here, this is something that a lot of people forget, whenever you have minus a minus, it turns to a plus sign. So this is really saying plus 18. So once we simplify it to negative 26 plus 18, we see that we have different signs again. So we're going to subtract and keep the larger sign. So I'm going to borrow from my neighbor, make this a 16, and then that becomes eight as our answer. And the larger one's sign is negative, so we have negative eight as our answer. Okay, so now we're at number five and we're gonna be doing 546 divided by 39. So we ask ourselves um, from left to right, how many times does 39 fit into each of these? So what that means is like we're starting with the leftmost digit, five, and asking ourselves, does 39 fit into five? No. Now let's move on to the next one to include that. And let's ask ourselves, does 39 fit into 54? Yes, it does. How many times? One time. So that's what we put up top. This is the divide step of long division. 
Next, we're going to do the multiply step. And the multiply step is we multiply the new value we put up here times the outside number. So we're doing 1 times 39. That gives us 39. And when we subtract, we're going to borrow. And then we get 15 there. That's the subtract step of long division. Then we're going to do the bring down step. Now, the bring down step is we bring down the next digit up here if there is one. So we're going to bring down that 6. After you do the bring down step, you basically repeat the, those four steps over again until you're done with the problem. So we're going to do 39. Um, how many times does 39 fit into 156? Well, let's round that up to 40. 39 is almost like 40. So if I did 40 times 5, that would be 200. That's a little too big. So maybe let's try, um, let's try maybe times 4. So let's do 39 times 4. So that's going to be 36. Carry the 3. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15, so that's 156. Perfect. It fits in exactly four times. That's the divide step. Let's go to multiply. When you multiply, you multiply the new thing you brought up. So not the whole 14. You're multiplying just the new thing. 4 times 39. 4 times 39, we already know, is 156. Then we subtract. We get 0. And check, is there anything else to bring down? No. So you know you're done with long division, a long division problem if you subtract if you subtract everything you get 0 and there's nothing left to bring down. So that's what happened. So I know that my answer is this number up here 14. So the number would be 14 and I don't have to worry about any negative rules because they're both positive values. So let's try that again and let's do it with um negative 6,975. And when I do this, what I do is I wait till the end to apply the negative and positives because I know like my answer is going to be negative. So I might just put like a negative there to remember. And then I could just treat it like it's regular 6,975 um, divided by 93. And I knew that this was a negative because if they have different signs with division and multiplication, there has to be um, a negative answer. So I'm going to follow my steps of divide. Whoops, that's a bad E. Multiply subtract, and then bring down. So does 93 fit into 6? No. Does 93 fit into 69? No. Does 93 fit into 697? Yes. So let's see. About how many times would 93 fit into 697? Um, so if I were to um, guesstimate, let's see, probably maybe like 7 times. So let's do 93 times 7. Let's see if that works. And let's do one, two. Okay, so then that would be nine times seven is 63, plus two would be 65. So that's 651. Yes, that works. Um, and it can't go any higher because if we added 93 to that, it would be going above 697. So it's going to go in exactly seven times, or not exactly seven times, but seven times is the most it could fit. And now we're going to do the multiply step. Nine 93 times seven is going to be. Um, 651, which is what we just did. So we subtract that. And we when we subtract that, we get 46. Now we have to bring down. So we're going to bring down the 5. And we're going to ask ourselves, OK, about how many times does um, 93 fit into 465? So let's think for a second, how many times does it fit in? And that would probably be like maybe, maybe 5. Let's try 5. So 93 times 5 would be um, 46 right there. And then that would be 465, so it fits in perfectly. Yep, five times. So then we just did the divide step. Now we have to multiply. Five times, 90, um, five times 93 is going to be 465. Then we're going to subtract and get zero. There's nothing left to bring down, so we're done with our problem. So the answer should be negative 75. OK, now we're at number seven. So these are the same signs. Um, and we're adding things with the same signs, so we're going to add and keep the same sign. So when we add 60 and 24, we're going to get 84, and we keep the same sign to make it negative 84. Now we have same signs, but we're multiplying. When we multiply with same signs, we need to make sure we have a positive answer. So I'm just going to keep that in mind um, before I start multiplying, that like whatever I get has to be a positive answer. So I'm going to multiply 58 and 63. Um, and it's going to be 8 times 3 is 24, so keep the 4, carry the 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. 
and then I'm going to add a zero when I start multiplying with my next place value, the tens place. And then I'm going to do 6 times 8 is 48, keep the 8, carry the 4. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. So when I add that all up, I'm going to get, let's see, 3,654. Um, and we know that the answer has to be positive. So 3,654 is our answer. Now I'm going to do negative 58 divided by 1. So I know anything divided by 1 is just um, the other number is what it should be equal to. And I see that they have different signs. So that means that I need a negative answer. So the answer should be negative 58. Okay, now we're going to do number 10. So um, we're doing 6,786 and then 87 on the outside. I see that it's a negative divided by a negative. So my answer needs to be positive. So 87, does it fit into 6? No. Does it fit into 67? Yes. Or sorry, no, it doesn't. <laughs> does it fit into 678? Yes, it does. So then 87 going to 678, we have to guess, okay, about how many times would that be? Um, so if we're thinking, estimating um, like 7 or 6 or 7, let's try 7. So 87 times 7 would be... 9, 49, carry the 4, 7 times 8 is 56, plus 4 would be 60, 609, yeah, because if you add 87, it would be going up too high, and that wouldn't fit. So we know it fits in 7 times at most. Now we did the divide step, now it's going to be the multiply step. 7 times 87 is going to be 609. Then we have to do the subtract step, so we're going to subtract those. And when we subtract, we're going to borrow and we get 69. Then it's the bring down step. So we're gonna bring down that six. And we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, about how many times does 87 fit into 696? Um, so let's try doing that, um, let's try doing that seven times. So 87 times seven would be nine, carry the four, eight times seven is 56, plus four is 609, um, which we have already done. Um, and that did not, and that does fit, but uh, it could go higher. We could add another group of 87. So when we add another group of 87, which we could also think of as 87 times 8, what we're going to get is exactly 696. So we're going to do 8 times 87 to get 696. And when we multiply, that's what we get. When we subtract, we get 0. There's nothing left to bring down, so we are all done. The answer here should have been positive 78. Okay, so now we're going to be doing um, number, oh, let me write the number again, and let's be doing number 11 now. So we're going to be doing 5,100 goes inside the house, and 60 goes outside. I see they are different signs, so that means the answer has to be negative. Does 60 fit into 5? No. Does 60 fit into 51? No. Does 60 fit into 510? Yes, it does. So this is the divide step, remember. So let's ask ourselves about how many times does it fit in? Okay, well, I think it would be around probably seven times. So let's do 60, or actually, sorry, not seven times. It would probably be like eight times. Um, eight times 60 would be, if we do zero times eight, that's zero. Eight times six would be 48, so 480 um, is what we would get when it goes in eight times and we multiply, which would be the next step. Then we have to subtract. And when we subtract, we get... We have to carry over and we get that this is 30. Then we have to bring down. So we're going to bring down this zero right here um, and ask ourselves, okay, how many times does 60 fit into 300? Well, it fits in exactly five times because five times 60 is 300. And when we subtract, we get zero. There's nothing left to bring down. So the answer has to be negative 85 in this case. Now for the next one, number 12, it's minus a minus. Remember that always turns into a plus. If you're subtracting a negative number, it's just plus. So then this is really just 20 plus 20, so that's 40. So for number 13, we see we have a negative and a positive being multiplied, so different signs means it has to be a negative answer. So if we were to start doing this, um, this problem all out, I'm going to write out the um, values over off to the right-hand side. What you need to remember is um, with multiplication, we, we start from right to left. It's kind of like the opposite of reading. So um, where we read from left to right, we have to multiply from right to left, actually. So we start with the bottom um, right number um, in the ones place. So like the 9 on the bottom times everything on top from right to left. 
So 9 times 9 is 81, so we're going to keep the 1, carry the 8. 9 times 6 is going to be 54. 54 plus 8 is going to be 62, so keep the 2, carry the 6. 9 times 8 is 72, plus 6 is 78, so keep the 8, carry the 7. 9 times 7 is 63, plus 7 is going to be 70, so we're going to keep the 0, carry the 7. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 7 is going to be, um, 36 plus 7 is 43, so we're going to keep the 3, carry the 4. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 4 is 31. So I'm going to cross all these out afterwards, and I'm going to cross out the 9 so that I remember I've already used those. When I go over to my next place value on the left, I'm going to add a 0 um, before I do that. And now I'm going to multiply 8 times 9, which is 72. Keep the 2, carry the 7. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 7 um, would be 55, so keep the 5, carry over the other 5. 8 times 8 is 64, plus 5 is 69, so keep the 9, carry over the 6. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 6 is going to be 62, so keep the 2, um, carry over the 6. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 6 is going to be 38, keep the 8, carry the 3. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 3 is going to be 27. So now, again, I'm going to cross out all those numbers so I don't get confused. And now that I have two numbers I've already multiplied with the, on the bottom, I have to add two zeros for that before I continue multiplying. And then I'm going to do nine or 7 times 9 is 63, so keep the 3, carry the 6. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 6 is 48, keep the 8, carry the 4. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 4 is going to be um, 60. So keep the 0, carry the 6. Um, oops, I didn't mean to cross that out yet. And then we're going to be doing um, 7 times 7, which is going to be 49 plus 6, which is going to be 55. So we're going to keep the 5, carry the 5. Um, and then we have 7 times 4 is 28 plus 5 is going to be 28 plus 5 is 33. So keep the 3, carry the other 3. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 24. Now we can cross all these out so we don't get confused. Um, and then I'm going to now um, cross out the 7 because I'm done multiplying with that. And before I multiply with the 6, I've already multiplied with three other digits to the right, so I add three zeros for that. And now I'm going to be doing 6 times 9, which is 54. Keep the 4, carry the 5. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5 is going to be 41, so keep the 1 and carry the 4. And then um, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 4 is going to be 52, so keep the 2, carry the 5. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 5 is 47, keep the 7, carry the 4. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28, so keep the 8, carry the 2. and 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 would be 20. So now that I've done all that, I'm going to add together all of the digits on the bottom. So 1, and that would be 4. Adding all of these, I would get um, 16. Adding all of these, I'm going to get um, 22. Adding all of these up, I'm going to get, um, that's 5, plus 3 is 8. And then adding all of these up, 1 plus, um, well, 8 plus 2 is 10 plus um, 6, it's going to be 16. And then adding all of these up, I'm going to get 20, or uh, yeah, 21. And then adding all of these up, that's going to be 4, 8, so 8 plus 8 is 16. Adding all of these up, I'm going to get a 3, and adding all these up, I'm going to get a 2. And then um, I add a comma after every three digits from right to left. Um, so then this is going to be a negative value we already decided. It's going to be negative 2,361,682,641. So that should be your final answer for this problem. Okay, so now we're going to be on number 14 right here. So we have just a positive divided by a positive. So our answer is just going to be a positive number. No, um, no extra stuff with integers there. 
Um, so we have on the inside of our long division house is going to be 3,406,175,168. And then on the outside is going to be 12,826. Okay, so let's ask ourselves, um, does 12,826 go into uh, 3? No. Does it go into 34? No. Does it go into 340? No. Does it go into 3,406? No. Does it go into 34,061? Yes, it does. So let's say um, it's probably going to be 3 times is too much, so then 2. 2 times. So remember, our steps for long division are divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So I just divided, and now I'm going to multiply 2 times um, 12,826. So when I do that, I'm going to get this right here. So 25,652. So that's what I'm going to put down here. 652. And then um, I'm going to subtract as my next step. So 1 minus 2, I can't do that. I have to borrow. So then this would become 11 and that's 9, 0, I have to borrow, and that's going to be 4, and then um, I have to borrow again, and that's going to be 8. So now I just subtracted, now I need to bring down the next um, digit that I am talking about, which would be the 7. So now I have to ask myself, how many times does 12,826 fit into 84,097? Um, so probably like, cause six times 12, yes, probably six. Let's try that. 12,826 times six would be, um, carry the three, six times two is 12 plus three is 15. So keep the five, carry the one, six times eight is 48 plus one is 49. Keep the nine, carry the four. 6 times 2 is going to be 12, plus 4 um, is going to be um, 16. Keep the 6, carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So that would be um, 76,954. Yeah, you can't fit another 12,000 into that. Um, so then let's do 6 different times. And then when we multiply, we get 76,956. And let's subtract now. So when we subtract, we get 1, that's 4, and if we borrow, that would be that. And then um, now we have um, 7,141, and we need to bring down the next value, the 5. So now we have 71,415. How many times does that fit in? So that would probably be like 5 times because that's just a little bit less than this. So 12,826 times 5, let's see what we get. So that's going to be 6 times 5 is 30, keep the 0, carry the 3, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is 13, 5 times 8 is 40, plus 1, 41, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 4, keep the 4, um, carry over the 1, 5 times 1 plus 1 is 6, yep, so then that would be 5 times that we're doing that, and then when we multiply, because that's our next step, we're going to be doing 64,130. And then we have to subtract, so 5 minus 0 is just 5, and we're going to do this is 8, and then that's 2, and then if we borrow, then this should be 7. And then we're going to, we just subtracted, so we're going to bring down now. We bring down that 1, so um, how many times does this fit into all of that right there? Well, that's going to be 5 times again, because we already did times 5 and times 6, and it definitely has to be only times 5. Um, so 5 times all of that, we already know from over here, is going to be 64,130. And when we subtract that, we're going to get 1, 2, 7, borrow, and we get 8,721. That's the subtract step, so now we have to bring it down. And um, now we have to see how many times does this fit into eight, um, eight, 87,216. Um, so that would probably be, that would be six times because if you add 12,000, it goes too high to this one. So it's going to be six times. Um, and when we multiply by six, we are going to get this value right here. So we're going to be doing 76,956. Then we have to subtract. And when we subtract, we're going to get this value right here. And then we have to bring down our last number, 
Um, and so then this becomes 102,608. And we have to ask ourselves, okay, how many times does that fit in? Well, we're definitely going to have to go above six. Um, let's see, seven, eight, eight might work. Eight might be the closest I think that we can get. So let's do um, times eight. 12,826 times 8 and see if that works. So we're going to have 48 because 6 times 8 is 48. Carry the 4. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 4 is 20. Keep the 0. Carry the 2. 8 times 8 is 64 plus 2 is 66. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 6 is 22. And then that's going to be 102,608. So it goes in exactly 8 times. And when we do the multiply step, we get exactly that. When we do the subtract step, we get zero and there's nothing left to bring down. So this is our final answer and we know it should be positive. So it's positive 265,568. Um, Obviously, you don't have to write the positive number. I was just keeping that as a reminder um, that we would have a positive answer. Okay, so now we're going to do number 15. We have um, different signs and we're multiplying. So that means that we have to have a negative answer. And then we're going to do um, 890 times 56. So again, when we multiply, we start at the bottom right times everything up top from right to left. 0 times 6 is 0. 6 times 9 is going to be 54. Keep the 4, carry the 5. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 5 is 53. And then we are going to cross that out so we don't forget that we already used that. And then I need to add a 0, and then it's 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 9 is 45. Keep the 5, carry the 4. Um, 5 times 8 is 40, plus 4 is 44. So we're going to add that all up, and when we do, we get this. So we have negative 49,840 is what your answer should be. And then now let's go to number 16. So these are, um, we're adding and subtracting with different signs because this is a positive and this is a negative. You always look to like what's to the left. So if there's nothing to the left, it's positive. There, if there's a negative to the left, it's negative. So this is a positive and a negative um, that we're adding and subtracting. So when we have different signs and we're adding and subtracting, we have to subtract and keep the sign of the larger um, value. So 7 minus 4 is 3, 7 minus 5 is 2. So this larger value um, is going to be 77. 77 is larger than 54, so we keep the negative sign. So it's negative 23. Now for this next one, we have a negative minus a negative, or, or a negative minus something. Um, and so if we look to the left of each, it's two negatives um, that we're working with. So when we have the same sign and we're adding and subtracting, we add them and keep the same sign. So we're going to keep the negative and we're just going to add these values together. So we're going to be doing... Um, 355,625 plus 28,947. So when we do that, let's see what we get. So this would be 7, this would be 15, this would be um, 14, this would be 8, this would be 3. Um, so we're going to get negative 384,572. And that would be your answer. Okay, so for this review, we're doing an order of operations review. Remember, don't forget PEMDAS, um, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Basically, um, PEMDAS is the one that you use when you're just doing like regular math, like you're just combining things, you're not moving anything to the other side of the equal sign. Like when you move things to the other side of the equal sign, that's when you use something else called SADMEP, which um, you probably saw me do during the diagnostic. But when you're not moving anything to another side of an equal sign, you're just using PEMDAS. Um, and so this is what people most likely um, mess up with in the calculator. So I really recommend reviewing um, this with your calculator after you do it without the calculator. So PEMDAS says we have to start with parentheses first. So that means we're going to start with this guy and this guy right here and copy over everything else. So we're going to copy over the 5. We're going to copy over the 2 to the third power. And 22 divided by 11, that's just going to be 2. So we're going to just make that a 2 copy over the minus 3 squared, and then we're multiplying by whatever 4 plus 5 is, which is 9. So we did parentheses, now we're going to do the exponents. So exponents are going to be this guy and this guy right here. So when we do the exponents, we're going to be um, copying over everything else. So 2 to the third is going to be 8, and then we're going to copy everything else. 
and then 3 to the second power is going to be 9. Now, this is also something that people mess up, um, and I'm going to copy over the other 9 before I keep talking. Um, so negative 3, if it was inside of parentheses um, squared, that would be when you do, like, um, this is plus 9. When you have negative of 3 squared, that's saying you're just doing 3 squared and putting a negative in front of it, just so you guys know. So we just did um, exponents. Now let's do multiplication. So that means we're going to be doing this guy and this guy. So we have 5 plus 16 minus 81. And then now division, there's no division, so we're good. And then we need to add and subtract from left to right. So 5 plus 16 is going to be 21. And then minus 81 um, is what we're going to be doing next. So when we do that, we get negative 60 as our final answer. So negative 60 is the answer to number 1. So now for number two, we're going to be doing PEMDAS again. Um, so parentheses first. Well, there's nothing inside the parentheses to do. So then we have to go to exponents, which we do have. So we're going to be doing this first and copying down everything else. So negative 7 squared, that's going to be um, positive 49. So we just put 49 there. So um, and we copy down everything else. So we just did exponents. So now let's move on to multiplication. So multiplication um, and multiplication or division, um, you can do from left to right. Um, sorry, so I should have said multiple, we're gonna do multiplication or division from left to right is how I should have phrased that. So it's basically like this part right here and then um, this part right here. Um, so we're gonna be doing negative six and then negative 49 divided by seven is going to be negative seven. And then that's gonna be times five is what we're doing next. So we're gonna be doing negative six minus 35 and then that's going to be equaling negative 41. Okay and then now let's do number three. So for number three again PEMDAS parentheses first. There's no parentheses to do. There's exponents though so let's do exponents next. So then we're gonna have 9 times 2 minus 8 squared is 64 divided by negative 2. So now let's do multiplication um, or division from left to right. So let's start with this and we're going to be doing um, 18 minus 64 divided by negative 2. And then, so now we have to do this part, and we have to do 18. And then, so always keep what's to the, like, the left um, is how I think about it as the easiest way to like do these. Like, so I think about this as like negative 64 divided by negative 2. Personally, that's the easiest for me. But you could also say I'm subtracting whatever 64 divided by negative 2 is. Um, but I'm just going to say it's negative 64 divided by negative 2. So when we do 64 um, divided by 2, that's going to be, or negative 64 divided by negative 2 is going to be positive um, 32. And then we have to add these up. And then when we add those up, we're going to get 50 as our final answer. So now let's go to number four, and I'm going to rewrite PEMDAS right here for us to remember. So we have to do parentheses first, so that means we're doing these guys first. So um, when you're adding or subtracting with, per, with uh, not parentheses, with decimals, you want to line up the decimal places in your question and line it up with your answer as well. So we're doing 5 plus 2 is 7 and 7 plus 3 is 10. And we lined up all the decimals, so we should get 10.7 there. So we have 10.7 times whatever we get here squared. So um, same thing when you're adding and subtracting. Um, 1.2 minus 2.2 and um, you're going to be using the same thing that you did with the integer rules where if you're subtracting with different um, different signs like this is a positive this is a negative you're just going to subtract the values and keep the larger one sign so this is going to be like a negative because 2.2 is the larger value technically like if we're just looking at the the stuff without the signs so we're going to be doing 2.2 minus um 1.2 and we're going to remember that our answer has to be negative. So we line up the decimals, we get 0, 1, so that's just 1. So this is going to be negative 1 squared. So now that we did um, parentheses, we're going to do exponents next, which means we have to do this guy right here. So then it's going to be 10.7 and negative 1 times negative 1 is just positive 1, so we're just doing that times 1. And then we just need to multiply. So then we just get 10.7 as our answer. 
So now let's go to number five. Um, for number five, let's erase this so we can check it off independently now. Parentheses is what we're doing first. So let's do um, all of this first. So we're going to copy down the other stuff, the negative three squared and three and the multiplication symbol. Five minus 10 is going to be negative five. And then negative five plus negative eight is going to be negative 13. So we're going to have um, all this times negative 13. So we just did parentheses, let's do exponents next. So negative three squared is what we're doing next. And when we do that, we get nine. And then we're gonna copy down everything else. So we did exponents, now let's multiply and divide from left to right. So let's do this guy first, nine divided by three is three times negative 13 is what we'll do next. And that would give us negative 39 as our answer to number five. Okay, so let's rewrite PEMDAS again over here. And we're going to be doing number six. So um, when you have mixed numbers, the way to turn them into um, like an improper fraction that you can then use is to multiply seven times two and then add five. And that becomes your new numerator. So seven times two is 14 plus five is 19. So that's 19 over and you keep the same denominator of seven. So that would be um, 19 over seven and then um, one and um, one and a half, because that's just what 1.5 is, it's just one and a half. I would just rewrite it like that and then do the same thing. Times plus keep the like denominator. Two times one is two plus one is three. Keep the like denominator of two. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy right here. Six times two is 12 plus one is 13 over six plus five is really just five over one. So now I'm going to do PEMDAS. There's no parentheses, so we're good on that. There's no exponents, but there is multiplication and division, so let's do that from left to right. So we're going to start with this guy right here, and remember when you multiply or divide with fractions, you're going to keep change flip, which means you keep 19 over 7, you change division to multiplication, and you flip this to 2 over 3. So we're going to do that plus 13 over 6 plus 5 over 1. And when we do this part right here, we're going to get 19 times 2 is going to be, that's 38. And then 7 times 3 is 21. And then we're adding that to 13 over 6 plus 5 over 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, do, we already did multiplication and division, so we're going to do any adding and subtraction adding and subtraction from left to right. So um, let's see, first let me um, see if I could simplify. Eh, well, we'll just go ahead and um, and multiply um, multiply the, the, what do you call it, denominators together to get a common denominator. Because remember, whenever you add or subtract fractions, you need to have a common denominator on the bottom. So let's do what is 21 times six. Well, that's going to be six and that's going to be 12, 126. So a common denominator will always be able to be um, like some what you multiply by on the bottom. You could do that or you could find like the lowest common one. Um, but if you want like a rule that works every single time, you can just multiply these numbers together um, to get the common denominator. So whenever you do that, you can't just magically do that to the bottom and not do anything to the top. You um, have to do the same exact thing to the top number, the numerator. So when we were getting to um, 126 from 21, we had to multiply by 6, so we have to do the same thing to the top. So let's see, what is 38 times 6? Well, that's going to be um, 48 and carry the 4. 6 times 3 is 18, 22. So that's going to be 228 over 126. And to get from 6 to 126, we had to multiply by 21 on bottom, so we have to do the same thing on top. Well, if we do 21 times 13, we're going to get 3, 6, 0, 1, 2, and we add all that up to get 273. And then let's try to get um, 1 to 126 as well, because we could just multiply 1 times 126 to get a common denominator. So we did that to the bottom. Now we have to do that same thing to the top value, multiply by 126. So if I do 120, uh, 126, is what that's supposed to say, times 5, we're going to get, let's see, 630. So when I add all of that on top, let's see, what do I get? So I'm going to do 228 
plus 273. And that's going to be 501. And then I'm going to add 630 to that. And I'm going to get 11,000 or sorry, 1,131 over 126 in this case. So now I'm going to see, okay, um, how, for, well, I could see um, if I wanted to divide by like a common factor, um, or I could just turn it into a mixed number. Um, on the SAT, like they might have mixed numbers in the answer choices, but not on the, um, the free response, like gridding questions, you would have to do it as like the simplest, um, form of the improper fraction like this basically just find the greatest common factor if there is one um but let's practice turning it into a mixed number in case you get like a multiple choice question with a mixed number so that you know how to do that um so we're going to be doing 1131 because remember a fraction bar is just a division sign so this is really saying 1131 divided by 126 is what that says so 126, does that go into 1? No. Does that go into 11? No. Does that go into 113? No. Does that go into 1,131? Yes. Um, let's see. About how many times? Um, let's see. 126. Let's try 9. I feel like it will be too high. Let's try 8. So then 126 times 8 is going to be 48. And then that's going to be 1,000. And yeah, because then you... Wait, could you add 126 to that? Mm. 126 plus that, no, that would be too high. So um, yeah, it's gonna go in eight times. And then eight times that we've already figured out is going to be 1,008, subtract. And when we subtract, we're going to get 123, but there's nothing left to bring down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna put this as our numerator of our mixed um, number, and this is our denominator. Um, and then we're going to ask ourselves, okay, is there a number that goes into both of these? And right away, I think three would go into both of them, because if you add all the digits, they're both divisible by three. Um, so let's divide each of these by three. So um, I'm going to get rid of that. I know it's getting messy. Sorry, guys. Um, so 123 divided by three, that's going to be 41. And 126 divided by three is going to be 42. So it should be eight and 41 over two would be the mixed number version of that. Um, so I see that there's fractions and decimals involved. It's usually easiest to just turn everything into a fraction. Um, so because like the decimal place values already include like fraction terms in them. Like for instance, you read this as like negative eight and four tenths because like the four is in the tenths place for the fraction. Um, or for the decimal, sorry. So then it would be like negative, like if we rewrite this, it would be negative eight and four over 10, like four tenths. Um, same thing with like this one. If we rewrite it, it's going to be like three and eight tenths um, times one eighth. Like you just have to like turn it into a fraction um, that involves like the place value that they're talking about. Like four is in the tenths place, so it's four tenths. Eight is in the tenths place, so it's eight tenths. Um, so let's now go and um, continue this. So remember when we're doing, um, well, actually we can even like simplify this because these are both divisible by two to make our lives easier. Same thing with this one over here so that we're working with lower numbers. So let's try that. So this is gonna be negative eight over, that's the same thing as two fifths um, times three and four fifths times one eighth. So now I'm gonna do the whole turning the mixed number into a, um, improper fraction thing. So I'm going to do two divided by negative five times, um, five times eight is 40 plus two is 42. It's 42 over five, uh, negative 42 over five times, and then three times or five times three is 15 plus four is going to be 19 over five. And then we're going to do that times one eighth. So now we're going to do um, any, we don't have parentheses, we don't have exponents. So we're doing any multiplication division from left to right. So let's start with this guy. So two over one, because that's the same thing as just two. Um, so we're doing two over one divided by negative 42 over five. So we're going to keep change flip, KCF, keep the two over one, change that to multiplication and flip this last fraction to five, negative five over 42 and copy down the rest. Now, one thing I do recommend for a lot of students that I'm going to just point out now, um, especially if you have any sort of learning disability or ADHD, um, 
like especially the ADHD like kids that have ADHD I have ADHD and like this is one of the most helpful things I've found because one of the key characteristics with people who have like various learning disabilities and um especially like ADHD is you make a lot of careless errors like you know how to do everything but you're like you'll get your test back and you'll look back and you'll be like oh I'm, I subtracted something wrong like when it was testing like something way more advanced than that like you make silly careless errors a way to avoid that is writing everything out because people with ADHD have trouble with self-monitoring and like a lot of that can be like mental math like they have trouble with a lot of mental math because they can't like keep track of everything um as well in their brain so um, really, if you even though it might seem like it takes time off of your test, it actually like makes you perform better. Um, and if you practice doing this, like every time that you're doing problems, like writing out all those different steps, you're going to get fast at doing that. So it's not really going to affect your pacing as much um, if you get fast at doing it. So, um, yeah, that's why I recommend like if you have ADHD or any type of learning disability, really write out every single step. Um, so then let's go and we're going to multiply this across. So we have negative 10 over 42, and now that's going to be times 19 over 5 times 1 eighth. So all we have to do now is multiply across because it's just multiplying fractions. So um, negative 10 times 19 times 1 is just going to be um, uh, negative 190. And then 42 times 5 is just going to be um, 42 times 5 is carry the 1. That's going to be 21. And then we have 20, or 210 times 8, um, that's going to be, sorry, 0, 8, and 16. So it's going to be um, 1,680. We can cross out those zeros, and then we have to check if we can simplify this any further, um, which I don't believe you can yet, because 19 is a prime number and 19 doesn't go into this. So your final answer should be negative 19 over 168. Okay, so now let's move on to um, number eight. Again, I'm going to write PEMDAS over here so we don't forget. So we're going to do any parentheses first. There's none of that. So now let's move on to exponents. There is that. So we're going to do four times negative eight plus six minus whatever negative two to the third power is. So negative two to the third power means we're doing negative two times negative two times negative two. So that would equal um, negative 8. So we have to subtract negative 8. So we did exponents. Now we have to do multiplication right here. Um, any multiplication or division, we have multiplication. So that would be negative 32 plus 6 minus negative 8. Remember, minus and minus is just plus. So I can just go ahead and turn that into the plus sign. So then I'm going to do negative 32 plus 6. Well, that's going to be um, negative 26 plus 8. And um, if I do negative 26 plus 8, that's going to be negative 18. Okay, so now we're going to be doing number 9, and we're going to be thinking of PEMDAS while we do that. Um, so remember, when you do PEMDAS, it's not just for the whole problem, it's also like within the steps of PEMDAS, which is why I included this problem. So um, what I mean by that is like, when you do parentheses, you have to think about also within the parentheses, what's the order of operations. So like within the parentheses right here, you have to do the multiplication step before you do the addition or subtraction step. So if I'm going to be doing um, one fifth um, plus whatever negative one fourth times five ninths is, when I'm multiplying with fractions, I just multiply across, so I get negative five over 36. So now I have all of this in parentheses divided by all of this in parentheses. And I'm going to continue by adding these. Um, I'm going to add those by doing a common denominator of whatever 36 times 5 is, which would be 180. So I'm going to have, um, to get from 5 to 180, I had to multiply by 36. So I have to do the same thing on top. So I'm going to get 36 over 180 plus negative. Um, to get from 36 to 180, I had to multiply by 5. So I have to do the same thing on top. So my plus negative 25 and then divided by all that other stuff on the right-hand side. So now when I um, add those up, I'm going to get 11 over 180. Now needs to be divided by, I have to do these parentheses now. So in those parentheses, I have to do the exponents first. So I'm going to do divided by negative 2 thirds minus whatever negative 1 6 squared is, which is just 
positive 1 over 36. So now I have to finish out these parentheses. So I have to do, um, I'm going to copy down 11 over 180 divided by um, whatever negative 2 thirds um, minus 1 over 36 is. So I have to get a common denominator. I can get a common denominator of 36 by multiplying this by 12. So I have to multiply the top by 12 as well. That gives me negative 24 over 36. And then I'm going to subtract 136. So when I do that, I'm going to get 11 over 180 is being divided by negative 25 over 36. And then I'm going to keep change flip um, because I'm dividing with fractions. So I'm going to keep um, 11, ooh, that's a bad arrow, 11 over 180. I'm going to change division to multiplication and I'm going to flip this fraction upside down. So um, when I do that, I can also cross multiply because I see six goes into that six times and six goes into this um, three, uh, 30 times, yeah. Oh, and I can keep going actually. Six goes into that one time and six goes into that five times. So I can get negative 11 because 11 times negative one is negative 11. Um, and then whatever five times 25 is, is what goes on the bottom, which would be 125. So your final answer should be negative 11 over 125. Okay, so again, we're going to remember PEMDAS when we're doing number 10 right over here. So for number 10, um, we have all decimals, so we don't have to worry about converting between decimals and fractions or any of that, and we're just going to follow our steps. So PEMDAS says we do parentheses first. So I'm going to be doing all of that first. So um, when I do that, I'm going to get um, negative 9.6 is just copied over times. Um, I have to do negative 0.5 minus 1.6, which is going to be just negative 2.1. And then I have to add um, 4.1 to that. So I'm doing negative 2.1 plus 4.1. So it's going to give me positive 2. So now I have positive 2 cubed. So I did parentheses, now I have to do exponents. So I'm doing this part right here. And when I do that, I'm gonna copy over negative 9.6 and um, I know that two cubed is going to be eight. Um, so then what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to do 9.6, so I already did my exponents, I'm gonna do 9.6 times eight, my multiplication step is what I'm doing next. So I know I'm gonna get a negative answer because I have different signs. So that means I have a negative answer. And I'm going to be multiplying 9.6 times 8. So 8 times 6 is going to be 48. Keep the 8, carry the 4. 8 times 9 is going to be 72. Plus 4 is going to be 76. And I have one digit in total after decimal in my problem, so I need the same one digit after decimal in my answer. So I'm going to get negative 76.8. And that is it for the order of operations part. Okay, so I put like a little reminder up here of like the steps for adding and subtracting fractions and decimals and all that. Um, so basically like for adding and subtracting fractions, you just make sure they have a common denominator, add um, or subtract um, the numerators and keep the common denominator. So like, I'm gonna just show you an example for each of these. because I feel like it's the, um, the best way to go about it. Um, so like if you're doing, for instance, one fourth um, minus, let's say one seventh, you want to make sure that you have a common denominator on the bottom. So um, one of the easiest ways to do that is just that'll always work is just multiply by um, the bottom numbers to get what your new denominator should be. So four times seven is going to be 28. So that's definitely a common denominator I can use. Now, you can't just magically do that to the bottom and do nothing to the top. Um, so what you do is you ask yourself, oh, how did I get from four to 28? Well, I multiplied by seven. So I have to do the same thing on top to get my new fraction, seven over 28. Same thing with the other one. I multiplied by 4, so I have to do that to the top as well. And then you just subtract, add or subtract the numerators, and then you keep the common denominator, 28. Same thing for adding. Now, for multiplying with fractions, it's just like this example right here. 2 thirds times 1 fifth equals 2 over 15. So all you do is multiply across. So 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 5 is 15. For dividing fractions, it's KCF, keep, change, flip. So I'm going to write that out right here so you can see how um, each of the steps corresponds with KCF, keep, change, flip. So it literally, the steps correspond with like the numbers and the symbols. So like K, keep, means you keep two thirds. C means you change the division to multiplication. And F means you flip this over to be five over one. Then all you do is multiply across and you get 10 thirds. Now, always make sure that you simplify your fractions. Like for instance, if I had, um, Let's do two 
um, thirds, times, um, I don't know, one sixth, let's say. So let's do, um, if we did that, we would multiply across and I would get two over 18, right? I have to simplify this um, by saying, okay, what's the biggest number that goes into both? That's called the greatest common factor. So the biggest number that goes into both is two. So I'm gonna divide by that and I get one ninth. So that's how I would simplify a fraction. Now, when you're adding and subtracting decimals, what you're going to do is just line up the decimal places. So like for instance, um, if I had 1.17 plus, um, let's do 1.5. I line up the decimal places and this works for subtraction too. It's adding and subtracting both the same thing. You just are changing whether you're adding or subtracting line up the decimal point in your answer as well, and then you can subtract or add. Now, if there's an empty space, you can fill those with zeros. So this would be seven, this would be six, and then this would be two, so 2.67. Now, if you're dividing with decimals, or sorry, multiplying with decimals, what you're going to do is you're going to do, let's say we had 1.17 um, times 1.5. Pretend that this is just 117 times 15 until the very end. So that's all I'm going to do, 117 times 15, I'm ignoring the decimals until the end. So when I do that, I'm going to get, um, that's 35, keep the 5, carry the 3. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. 5 times 1 is 5. I'm going to cross all this out so I don't get confused. Add a 0 before going to the next place value. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add these up and you should get this value right here. Now, once you add it all up with multiplying it with decimals, this is where it matters about the decimal points. You add, you ask yourself, okay, how many digits are after a decimal place in total in my problem? If I look at both numbers, I have one, two, three digits after a decimal place. So I need to also have one, two, three digits after a decimal place in my answer. So this should be my answer, 1.755. Now, if I'm dividing with decimals, like let's say I was doing um, one point, I'm trying to think of something that works. Um, let's do, let's do um, 15 divided by 1.5. So if I'm doing 15 divided by 1.5, 15 technically is the same thing as 15.0, right? So um, whenever I'm dividing by decimal points, I need to make sure that the um, outside number is a whole number. The way I do that is um, I move the decimal point if needed. So if I move the decimal point over to right here, it's just 15. But I can't do something to the outside and not do it to the inside, so I also need to do it to the value in there. So then this becomes instead 15 into 150 with the decimal point being right there. And you copy the decimal point up in your answer. So then it would be 15 goes into one, no it doesn't. 15 goes into 15, yes, one time. So then that would be 15 minus zero, bring down the zero, 15, it goes in zero times. So then zero times 15 is just zero, subtract, there's nothing left to bring down, so your answer is 10. So that's just a quick little review of the rules um, of like fractions and decimals, but we're gonna now review like the actual problems. Okay, so for number one, we are adding um, with fractions. So you have to make sure that both of them are in fraction format. So two thirds already is a fraction, but 24 isn't, but we could say that's 24 over one because any whole number can just be written over one. It's the same thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we need to have, we need to have common denominators. So I need to make sure that both of them have um, the same bottom number, basically the same denominator. So I can easily do that by saying three times one is just three. So I can have that be my common denominator. I didn't have to do anything to two thirds to get to um, a three for my bottom number. So I just keep the two on top. But to get from one to three, I had to multiply by three on top on bottom. So I have to do the same thing on top. So 24 times three is going to be 72. Um, and then we're just going to add that across and we get 74 over three for our answer. Um, so now let's go on to the um, next problem, which is number two. And in this problem, we have um, 16 on the bottom for both of them. We already have a common denominator. Um, so we don't need to like um, make a new common denominator. We can just add a cross on top and keep the common denominator. So this is just 14 over 16, but then we have to simplify it. Um, so 
2 goes into both of those, so we're going to divide by 2 on top and bottom, and we're going to get 7 eighths for our answer here. Now, if we move on to number 3, I'm going to start writing down here. Um, we have, now we do not have common denominators here, so we're going to want to pick a um, common denominator on um, the bottom. So I'm just going to easily do that by doing 14 times 12. And that's going to give me, uh, let's see, if I add those up, I get 168. So I'm going to get 168. And then I have to change 5 14 um, into something over 168. I did that by multiplying by 12 on the bottom. So I have to do the same on top. And that becomes 60 over 168. And then I have to do um, times 14 on the bottom here to get to 168. So I have to do the same thing on top. So let's see, what is 25 times 14? Well, that would be 350. So we have 60 minus 350 on top. Um, so let's see, we're going to get, if we do the subtraction there, that would be negative 290 over 168. Now I know two can definitely go into each of these, so let me just divide by two on top and bottom. So if I divide um, negative 290 by two, I'm going to get negative one, four, five, negative 145. And if I divide 168 by two, I'm going to get 84. So I would get um, negative 145 over 84, and that cannot be simplified any further, so that would be your final answer. Okay, so now we're gonna be going to number four, so we need a common denominator. Again, easily just say six times 10, that's gonna be your common denominator, so 60. To get from six, um, to get to 60 from six, we had to multiply by 10, so do the same thing on top, and we get 50 on top. To get from 10 to 60 on bottom here, we had to multiply by six, so do the same thing on top. And we get negative 54 on top. Now we're going to add those up and we should get negative four over 60 because we're gonna add the top and keep the common denominator. Now um, let's see, four goes into both of those as the greatest common factor, so we would get negative one over um, one five, that would be 15, so negative one fifteen, one negative one fifteen. Um, so now we're going to go to this problem right here, and remember you have to turn it into a fraction if it's um, a whole number, so negative 37 is the same as negative 37 over 1 times negative 3 fourths, negative times a negative is a positive, so we're going to have a positive answer, and we just multiply across, so 37 times 3 is going to be, um, that's carry the 2, so then that would be um, 111, and over four, so 111 over four would be the answer here. Now let's go to number six. So for number six, again, multiply across, so um, 18 negative 18 times seven, um, a negative times a positive is a negative, so we know our answer on top is gonna be negative. So if I do 18 times seven, I'm going to get um, six, carry over the five, so that's 126, negative 126 over 33, in this case, so then um, those are both divisible by three. So then I could say I have negative, because I'm simplifying the fraction now, that's why I'm dividing by the greatest number that goes into each of them on top and bottom, and I'm gonna get negative 42 over 11. So that should be my answer. And then let's go to the next one, number seven. So we have um, minus a minus, remember, is always a plus, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And we want to turn, when we have a mixed number and a regular like fraction, we need to turn the mixed number into a fraction, um, like an improper fraction. So to do that, I have to multiply 5 times 1 plus 1, keep the 5 on the bottom. So let me just show you how that looks. So 5 times 1 is going to be 5 plus 1 is 6. So we're going to do 6 over, keep the same denominator, 5. So now I need to have a common denominator. So this needs to turn into something um, plus something else with the same number on bottom. So let's get a common denominator by multiplying 19 and 5. So 19 times 5, that's going to be 45, 9, so 95 is our common denominator. To get from 19 to 95, we had to multiply by 5. So let's do the same thing on top to get 50 on top. To get from 5 to 95, we had to multiply by 19 on bottom, so let's do the same thing to the top. So if I do 19 times 6, I'm going to get 114. 
So now let's add those up to see what we get for our final answer. So adding the numerators, we are going to get 164 over 95 um, in this case. And there is not a number that goes into both of those. So that would be your final answer. And then now let's go and do this problem number eight. So remember, this is just the same thing as negative six over one. So we're gonna keep, change, flip. So negative six over one I'm keeping, I'm changing the division to a multiplication, and I'm flipping negative eight sevenths to negative seven over eight. Negative times a negative is a positive, so I know I have a positive answer, and it's going to be positive 42 over eight. Those are both divisible by two, because they're both even numbers for sure. So then 42 divided by two is going to be 21, and um, eight divided by two is going to be four. So your final answer is 21 over four. Okay, so now let's do number nine. So again, a division with fractions, keep, change, flip. Keep seven fourths, change division to multiplication, and flip negative one fourth to negative four over one, and you're gonna get negative 28 over four, which just simplifies to negative seven. And then for number 10, we have 3.5 squared, which is the same thing as just saying um, we have 3.5 times 3.5. So if we're doing 3.5 times 3.5, let's do that off to the side. Remember, we're just pretending it's 35 times 35 till the very end. So I'm going to just multiply 5 times everything on top. And when I do that, I should get this, put a 0, and multiply the 3 times everything on top. So then I'm going to get this and I add it all up. And then I ask myself, myself now in the problem, how many digits are after a decimal in total? Well, there's one, two in the problem after a decimal. So there has to be one, two after a decimal in my answer. So then my final answer should be 12.25. Okay, so now let's go to number 11. So for number 11, it's squared. So again, remember that means I have it multiplied twice together. So I have negative 9.7 times negative 9.7. And um, I know my answer is going to be positive because they have the same sign being multiplied. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And I'm doing 9.7 times 9.7. Same thing. I'm pretending it's 97 times 97 or, until the very end. So that would be 49. And then that's 63 plus 4 is 67. And then I put a 0, multiply now by 9 and 7, that's 63, carry the 6. 9 times 9 is 81, plus 6 is 87. So now we are going to add all of this up. And um, when we do that, we're going to get this right here. And we ask ourselves now, after we've added everything up, how many digits in total are after a decimal place in our question? Well, there's two, so there should be two in our answer as well. So this would be 94.09. Okay, so now we're gonna go to number 12, which is saying now instead of squared, it's cubed. So that means we have this written down um, three different times being multiplied. That's what the little number on the top, the exponent tells you how many times you multiply it by itself. So this is saying we have this, negative 1.37 multiplied by itself as three different, uh, three different factors. So let's start by doing one, um, we know that this is gonna be a negative answer because we have negative times a negative is a positive number times a negative um, is going to be a negative answer. So we know our answer is gonna be negative. So I'm gonna put a negative there so I remember and now I'm gonna do just these ones first. I'm gonna do 1.37 times 1.37 first. Again, I'm pretending it's 137 times 137 and that's going to give me um, Let's see, 49 carry the four, so seven times three is 21, plus four is 25. Seven times one is seven, plus two is nine. Put a zero, three times um, seven is 21, keep the one, carry the two. Three times three is nine, plus two is going to be 11. Three times one is three, plus one is four. Um, and then we're going to do two zeros that we add there, and we're gonna be doing one times seven is seven. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 1 is 1, add it all up, and when we add it all up, this is what we get, and we have to ask ourselves now that we've added it all up, how many digits are after a decimal in our question? Well, there's four, so there has to be four digits after a decimal in our answer. So now we have 1.8769 that we're going to do times that final 1.37. 
So I'm going to be doing 1.37. So I'm treating this now like it's 18,769 times 137. And I'm, again, I'm going to wait to the end for the decimal part. So I'm going to do 7 times everything on top. And when I do that, I get this. So that's 49 plus 4 is um, 53. So keep 3, carry the 5. And this is going to be 61. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 6 is 13. I'm going to cross all that off, and I'm going to put a zero, and then do three times everything um, on top from right to left. Three times nine is 27, keep the seven, carry the two. Three times six is 18, plus two is 20, keep the zero, carry the two. Three times seven is 21, plus two is 23, keep the three, carry the two. Three times eight is 24, plus two is going to be 26, keep the six, carry the two. Um, and then three times one is going to be um, three, plus two is going to be five. Um, and then we're going to now do, um, we're gonna cross all this out and we're gonna be doing one times everything on top after we add those two zeros. One times nine is nine, one times six is six, one times seven is seven, one times eight is eight, and one times one is one. So we're gonna add all that up. And when we do that, we will get, let's see that 17, and that's going to be um, 13, 14, 15, and then that's going to be that. Okay, so now in our problem, we have one, two, three, four, five, six digits after a decimal. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six digits after a decimal. So your final answer should be negative 2.571353 in this case. So now let's do number 13. So number 13 says we have 15.496 minus 17. So 17 is the same thing as 17.0, right? So um, if we're doing minus 17, um, we're saying like minus 17.0 is how we can think about it. But also remember, like back to our um, rules when we were adding and subtracting with integers, if you have a positive um, and negative, like different signs that you're adding and subtracting, then you need to um, do um, the value subtracted and then just make sure that you keep the sign of the bigger number or bigger value. So between 17 and 15.496, 17 is bigger, so we know that our sign has to be negative. So I'm going to do just regular subtraction of 17.0 minus all of that. I'm lining up the decimal points. And then um, whenever you have empty spaces, just fill those with zeros after the decimal point. And then we just subtract this like normal and make sure that our decimal point is lined up with our problem and answer. So zero minus six, I can't do that. So I have to borrow from my neighbor. So this becomes a six, this becomes nine. Um, this also becomes nine and this becomes 10. So then this is four, that's zero, that's five, that's one. So then my answer should be negative 1.504 in this case. So now for this one, same sort of thing. Um, they have different signs, so I have to keep the bigger one sign. So between 24 and 0 0.108, 24, the positive number is bigger, so I know I have a positive answer. So I'm going to be doing 24.0 is the same thing as 24, um, and then I'm going to have to line it up with 0 0.108, fill any empty spaces with zeros, and then I'm going to subtract those, and I have to borrow from my neighbor, so then this becomes um, 23.892, uh, and I know it's a positive, so it would be positive, and I don't have to write positive, I was just using that as a reminder. So that would be 23.892 in this case. So then let's keep going to the next one, um, 15. So we have the same sign, negative, negative, because if we look to the left, negative and negative. So that means we add and keep the negative sign. So I'm going to add these up. Remember, line up your decimal points. 36 is the same thing as 36.0. And fill any empty spaces with zeros. So then you're going to just line up your decimals in your answer as well and add everything up. And you're going to get um, 381.45. And you know the answer has to be negative, like we discussed earlier. So it has to be negative 381.45. Now for number 16, we have the same sign, so add and keep, same thing. So 76.4586, line up the decimal place for 47.87 as well. Fill the empty spaces with zeros, add it up, 
and um, you're going to get, and you have to line up your decimal and your answer as well, and then you are going to get 122.3286 as your answer. Okay, so now for number 17, we're going to be doing um, multiplication. So we're going to be doing 9,450 times 64.76. And remember, you're pretending that um, the decimal isn't there until the very end. Um, and we're going to get a positive answer because it's just a positive times a positive. So 6 times 0 is going to be 0. 6 times 5 is going to be 30. 6 times 6 is 24 carry, um, plus the carried 3 is going to be 27. And then we're going to have 6 times 9 is 54 plus 2 is 56. So now we're going to add a 0 and multiply 7 times everything on top. And when we do that, we should get, that's 31. 9 times 7 is 63, plus 3 is 66. And we're adding two zeros now before we multiply by 4. Um, so 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 5 is going to be 20, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. Um, and then we have 4 times 9 is 36, plus 1 is 37. And then we're adding three zeros now and before we multiply by 6, um, and we're doing 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 5 is going to be 30, and um, 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is going to be 27, so keep the 7, carry the 2, 6 times 9 is 54, plus 2 is 56, and then we're going to add all this up, so then it's going to be, let's see, so that's going to be 5 times uh, 5 plus 6 is 11, plus that is going to be 19. And then we're going to have 13 plus 8 is going to be 21. And then 2 plus um, 3 is going to be 5, plus 6 is going to be 11. So then we're going to have this value right here. And then now we wor worry about the decimal. So in our problem, in total, we have two digits after a decimal. So we need to have two after decimal in our answer. So then the um, final answer becomes 611,982. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do number 18. So we're going to be doing, um, this is a positive divided by a negative number. So we know our answer has to be a negative. So if we're doing um, 8.5 divided by, by 2, um, we're going to be doing this where the 8.5 goes on the inside and copy over the decimal on top. So two goes into eight four different times. Now I'm gonna multiply and subtract. So then I get zero, bring down the five. Two goes into five um, at most two times. Two times two is four, subtract, get one. Um, now with these, whenever you have a remainder, you can keep adding zeros after the decimal point until you're done with the problem because um, any value added after a zero doesn't really count, like it doesn't do anything. Like 8.5 is the same thing as saying 8.50. So we're not changing the value, we're just helping ourselves to continue to divide. So when we bring down the zero, it becomes 10, so two goes into 10 five times. Now we multiply, subtract, we get zero, there's nothing left to bring down, that's our final answer. So negative 4.25 is the answer to number 18. Okay, so now for number 19, we have a negative times a negative, so that means we have a positive as our answer. So I'm going to put that as a little reminder. And I'm going to be doing um, 24.17 times um, 3.6. And then we're going to be um, multiplying those as if it's 2,417 times 36. We'll worry about the decimals at the end. So 6 times everything on top from right to left. 6 times 7 is going to be 42. Carry the 4. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10, carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25, carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 4. Add a 0 before you multiply by 3. So now 3 times everything from right to left on top. 3 times 7 is going to be 21, carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is um, 6, plus 1 is 7. So now we're going to add all this up, and when we do that, we get this, and then now we worry about the decimals. So we have in total in our problem three digits after a decimal, so we need to have three digits after a decimal in our answer. So we know it's going to be positive, we put that reminder there, but we don't have to write that. 
So we're going to write 87.012 is our final answer. And now let's do number 20. So we have a division problem where it's going to be 3087 divided by 2.45. Remember, the number on the outside has to be whole. You have to move the decimal to make it whole if it's not already. I moved it two places on the outside, so I have to move this decimal two on the inside, fill the empty spaces with zero. So this really becomes 245 on the outside, and on the inside, we have this, 308,700. So now, does 245 go into 3? No. Does it go into 30? No. Does it go into 308? Yes, one time. 1 times 245 is that, and then we subtract. When we subtract, we're going to get 63, then we bring down. 245 goes into 63, I believe that would only be two times. So then that would be if we, um, two times, yeah. And then that would be 490. Um, so then that would be going in two times, so then we would get 490 from that. Subtract. And then we're going to bring down um, so now we're asking ourselves how many times does 245 go into 1,470? So let's see, that would probably be, hmm, it might fit six times. Okay, let's try six. Um, so then we're going to do zero, um, thir that's 30, keep the zero, carry the three. So then this is going to be 27, and that's going to be 140. Okay. Um, yeah, it actually went in perfectly. Okay. So that goes in perfectly six times. So then we're going to get 1,470 when we multiply. When we subtract, we have zero, but we have another zero to bring down. So it goes in zero times, and then we multiply that to get 200, or sorry, to get zero. And then we subtract and we get zero at the end. So this is our final answer. We should have 1,260 